that changes the life of Abu Mahdura completely. He said to Abu Mahdura, what a beautiful voice you had. I was keenly listening to your adhan when you're repeating the words of the Mu'addin and I absolutely fell in love with it. How amazing and wonderful was your voice. Allahu Akbar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear Muslims, this is your brother, Abdurrahman Ishaq. Um, when it comes to the youth, I always recall a very beautiful incident of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of the many incidents that actually occurred in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as we all know as Muslims, or we should know, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was made to be the best of examples for us. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has made for us the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be the best of examples. So you cannot find or need anything except that you will find the best of examples in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his life, his actions how he carried himself, how he dealt with matters. <clears throat> so after the conquest of Mecca, the Prophet Sallallahu was moving to a close by town. And whenever the Prophet Sallallahu moved to a place and he encamped there, he established the prayers in Jama'ah and he always made the call to prayer. In the Islamic religion, in our faith, the call to prayer is a symbol is of the sha'air of Islam, <clears throat> the symbols of Islam. And the symbols of Islam have got very specific characteristics to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even says, وَمَنْ يُعَظْلِمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقُوَ الْقُلُوبِ Whosoever venerates the symbols and the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a sign of the piety in the heart. It's a sign of iman within one. It plays the role of also doing da'wah, delivering the message. So when the call of Adhan was being made by the Mu'addin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that respective town, there was a group of boys and some of the narrations indicate that not, they weren't really young, rather teenagers, youth in short. And they were mimicking the call to prayer, not really in a positive way, but sarcastically. They were mocking the call to prayer by repeating it. The way... We would mock someone if someone passes a command. You would repeat it mockingly. So they would repeat the call to prayer, the words of Adhan, sarcastically. And the Prophet ﷺ from a distance could see them. After a while, the Prophet ﷺ calls this group of boys. And he says to them, and he asks to them, he asks them, sorry, who amongst you was mimicking the call to prayer, making fun of it? So they all put the blame on two of them. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, amongst the two of you, who was the loudest? So they pointed to one of them whose name was Abu Mahdura. A young boy. But the Arabs lo love to call each other with titles and names. Abu Mahdura. He was young. Abu Mahdura narrates this incident and he says, like I was standing before the Prophet ﷺ absolutely freaked out. I don't even know what to do now. I was caught red-handed, mimicking, sarcastically, the call to prayer. And now I'm in front of the Prophet. I think he will take my life away. But look at how beautifully the Prophet ﷺ connects with him. And he just passes one statement that changes the life of Abu Mahdura completely. He said to Abu Mahdura, what a beautiful voice you had. I was keenly listening to your adhan when you're repeating the words of the Mu'addin, and I absolutely fell in love with it. How amazing and wonderful was your voice? Allahu Akbar. Abu Mahdura says that this statement mellowed me down completely. It changed my inside self completely and the way I looked at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam rubbed his hand on his chest and he said, and he made a prayer, a dua for him. And he said, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you 
through Islam and bless Islam through you. And he let him go. But before he let him go, he said to him, could you repeat with me, along me, the wordings of the Adhan? So the Prophet ﷺ said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, and Abu Bahadura repeated, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, he repeated, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, until the end. Abu Mahdura says, I left the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with him not even inviting me to Islam by a statement. Nothing, no comments, nothing, just that. That was my interaction. And Wallahi, before I met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was the most hated person to me. And after whatever he did to me, and the way he connected with me, the way he engaged with me, the way he spoke to me, how merciful and amazing his interaction with me was, he became the most beloved people to me. He said the next day I came back looking for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I said to him, I surrendered myself to him and I said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to become a Muslim. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam assigned Abu Mahdura and he made him one of the Mu'addineen of Mecca. There were very few people who had the privilege of giving the Adhan at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was a status. Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum, and Abu Mahdura was one of them. Now, let's derive some lessons from this, dear listeners. The point here that I'm trying to make is how the Prophet Sallallahu connected with Abu Mahdura. Whatever he did was an act of disbelief. This was a serious crime, taking um, a piss out of the sha'ira of Islam, a symbol of Islam. That's a grave sin. And the Prophet Sallallahu could do anything to him and he had the right to do so. But look at how the Prophet ﷺ connected with him, that he mellowed him down completely and he made his heart gravitate towards Islam without even suggesting Islam to him. This is what we need to do with the youth. Abu Mahura was in his young age, in his prime youthful age. This is what we need to do with the youth. When they come to the masjid with their funky hairstyles, maybe with tattoos on their body, we don't brush them off with our harsh statements or the periphery of our gazes, the stern, harsh look that we give them. Rather, we connect with them. And this is what will make them steadfast upon Islam, if not attract them to Islam in the first place. Jazakumullahu khairan. <laughs>